your man. All right, we back. Beach bars and bourbon. This is the cigar segment of the show. So we're going to light up. We're in this beautiful cigar room in 1865. So it's a must that we light up a little bit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you smoking on? What we smoking on? Uh, this is Romeo, Romeo and Julieta, man. Romeo and Julieta. You know what I'm saying? Reserve a real. And we I only... Believe, I believe we, this we, is a Nicaraguan we, roll, but don't quote me on that. And listen, the cigars and whiskey go together like Romeo and Juliet. Damn. You get it? Love so, that. Love that. So look, we're going to jump Speaking in. Speaking of Juliet. Though. Speaking of Juliet. And poetry. We're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about the state of female rap. Yeah. The state of female hip hop. I guess we can call it that. Female hip hop, women hip hop. So, you know, we were talking one day and I was just thinking, I was zoning out, and I was thinking back to MC Light. I was thinking back to Queen Latifah coming up to Foxy Brown, Lauren Hill. And I'm thinking like, damn, all right, what we got these days? We got City Girls. We got Cardi B. Glorilla. We got Glorilla. We got Nicki. Yeah. I mean, what we do we- Rhapsody. So, We got We got Rhapsody. Man. But what do we think about the state of the women who are representing our culture, hip hop culture. What do we think about the representation? Has it has it declined in the sense that we had women who our, our daughters could kind of look up to and wanted to be like? Hmm. And then now, what do we have? What do we have? I don't know. It could be it could well, be positive. It could be negative. Well, I know how I feel about it. It's a mixed bag. Clearly, it's a mixed bag. And, and as as a father of girls, um, you know, my daughters are Cardi B fans. My, daughter, my daughters are Cardi B fans. They like Glorilla. They love Nicki. And listen, there, there's certainly value in empowerment and embracing who you are and liberation. I understand it all. But when I, when I put things in perspective, content-wise, you know, we've come from an era, like you said, like especially like MC like Queen Latifah, Roxanne Shantae. These, these women were like showing, they, if there was something about them standing ten toes down as competitors, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, like, probably my favorite female rapper or slash artist of all time is Lauren Hill. She's just one of a kind. And I get it. Not, Unbelievable. Yeah, they just, you know, there's not going to, there probably won't ever be another Lauren Hill. Arguably, the greatest rap artist of all time. Yes. The greatest female, the greatest female, artist yeah. in hip hop of all time. Insane. Arguably. Insane. Yeah. So, so you, when you come from an era, which was a golden era of hip hop, where that's my favorite artist, rap artist, or what have you, it, get, it is for me, and I'm, you know, I'm in my 40s, so I'm a little disappointed in right. the era of female hip hop. Rhapsody does give me hope because I feel that she, she's, she is someone that can carry on that tradition of what I'm used to pumping. But, you know... I'm not the biggest fan of Cardi B and, and, and Glue, really. I mean, if I'm looking for a ratchet vibe, yeah. But right, right. to your to your bigger point, is there a relative, like, you know, is is it is it like a, a diluted version of what I know? Hundred percent. Female hip hop has always been. So, my question when I ask something like this is like, who stole the soul? Here we go again, where we had a culture that we curated ourselves right right and when black people curate a culture on our own it's usually a better representation of who we really are than if somebody else comes in and curates our culture for us right of course you know what i'm saying Hands like down. i think back to like uh uh um what's his name uh gordon uh damn he did the learning tree uh you know that you know the guy i'm talking about sean uh gordon gordon parks Gordon Parks, Gordon Parks filmmaker, Mario Van Peebles, guys like that. When they made black film, it was from an authentic black place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like because it was from an authentic black place, it was more. It was it was more of 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 us. It was just it was just who we really are. It wasn't this crazy exact. Thank you, bro. We got my man. 
Manny, thank My you, My man brother. Manny coming through Appreciate with the cocktails. You. Appreciate you. Cheers. Cheers. So the music was coming from, uh, the, 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 the films back then were coming from a way more authentic place. And it was way more of a true black represent, re representation than what, than what we got when we didn't create them. Right. So I feel the same way about the music. And then particularly speaking about female rappers, women rappers, however you want to say it. Somebody told me don't say females because females are... Let's are, not go are, down that rabbit hole. Are, 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 are like you talk about animals when you talk about female. Like, like right. don't. Like, women like, rappers. Like women. women rappers. Let's women. say women rappers. Right. You were just right. getting a more pure, better black experience, right? Yeah. So I feel like when it, came to, when it comes to music, mm -hmm. I feel the same way. Like in the 80s, early 90s, that was really us dictating who we right. were. Because no one believed in it outside of us, so they figured this won't last. Right. This is a, this is a 15 minutes of fame experience with this hip-hop thing. 100%. 100%. 100%. So they didn't, so they didn't even care. They didn't, they didn't right. care. Right. But now, since they're in it and they've manufactured artists, now we get these like monolithic, one-way fucking portrayals of who we are. Like, because they think we're a certain thing, and that's not, we're way more dynamic than that one thing. Saying that to say, right now, in my opinion, when you look at the female artists that are out, all of them are the same. They're, they're, they're all hypersexualized. Yeah. It's like all hypersexualized. Every, the ones who are popular. Yeah. The, run, the ones who are getting the bag put behind them. The mainstream. Yeah, the mainstream was the ones who they put in the bag behind. They're all hypersexualized. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Is it because that's just who you want our culture to be? You, you, when, when, you, when you see our women viewed, that's how you want our women viewed? Yeah, yeah. I Come mean, on. again, back, and, and I couldn't agree more. Like, you know, I know we can get contentious about, of course. Pers about perspective on music. We can. But we, we're one and the same when it comes to this, man. And that's why, you know, you said everything that I would be saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only thing that I would say in addition to that is, the role that parents play in mm -hmm. the choice of music has a is a huge factor because there there is a there's it feels like there is a level of disinterest from parents if it's something that's a good distraction for their kids or distracts them. You know, this is more of a mm -hmm. social media, this is a tablet, a device era where all of these distractions are okay for a parent if that keeps you out my business. Now that's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole yeah. discussion, but a lot of parents don't even know what their kids listen to. 100%. So when these YouTube views or these streams and they're skyrocketing, a lot of it has a, a lot of it has uh, more to do with the fact that the parents are unaware what their kids are listening to or interested in, and they're finding out more matter of fact than anything. Mm -hmm. So which is a segue for me with what I wanted to talk about. Well, real quick, before we jump off okay. that, before right, we jump off that, I know we, we, we showed on time a little bit, but before we jump off that, okay. you said earlier that your daughters listen to, uh, you said they like Cardi? They do. Who else? They like Cardi. Now, let me be clear. They love Lauryn Hill. Okay. They, no, 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 no don't Rhapsody. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because let me, they, let me, let me, let me do that. Because I, I got to enjoy I gotta, okay. Cardi and Nicki Minaj, those are two, okay. of, their, two of their favorite female So how do too. you, all right, because my daughter, Remy Ma. My, my daughter is the, the same age as one of your daughters, right? Yeah. yeah. She doesn't really listen to hip hop, right? At least not to my knowledge, but to, she loves Taylor Swift, right? So, but if she did like those artists, because I'm an artistic dude, uh -huh. it would be hard for me to try to filter that or, 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 or tell yeah, her I mean, don't. You know, aside so, from so, so, so my question is, like, how do you process and deal with them liking artists who mm -hmm. you know just kind of the artists are kind of negative to be honest so, with you. So I got to be honest with you man organically as a father I'm open minded and I'm real mm -hmm. okay um, curse words are just words. Okay what about concepts though because the concepts are worse Con than the words. Concepts are where we have discussion. Okay. You get what I'm saying? But a curse word not going to be like, turn that down. No, no, hell no, no. But conceptually, when, it's con when you're trying to tie context to what an artist is talking about and how does it correlate to who she is as a person and it translated to her lifestyle, that's mm -hmm. a different conversation. For sure. So my daughters, they understand it and they get it. So right, right. They're, they're able to, to differentiate 
that version of what hip hop and rap is from who they are as individuals. Right. right. We preach independence. Right. We preach liberation. Mm -hmm. We we preach self respect, mm -hmm. self pride, all of that. So, you know, we're able to filter because of it, For and sure. because sure. it's a concerted effort of mine and my wife to make sure that they hear so much about other artists and they listen to everything under the sun when it comes to uh reggaeton or bachata mm -hmm. bad bunny is one of their favorite artists right so so and, and he's huge trap rap from your know, spanish trap or whatever they want huge. to call it he's huge but aventura like i can go down the list i know these names because of them so i was, that was a setup i set you up just now just set him up hey. for the alley you hey. so what i was going to say is I know that about you. I know that about your family. I know y'all are intelligent. I know you're going to frame it a certain way. And I know they're going to be diverse in what they listen to and what they do. But the problem I have is 90% of the families in our community aren't going to do that. That's fine. That's the issue. The issue yeah. is their mothers are acting just as ratchet as the artists they listening to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where I got a problem with the artists that are being pushed to wild babies. Yeah, man. That's where Facts. the problem comes in. It is. And it's a real problem and it's something that, you know, collectively has to be addressed. But, you know, who's going to solve someone else's family's problems? We certainly can't. But well, it's a great topic to discuss. It, it is. About it that. is. It, it, and before we leave it, I'm going to just tell you something that had a, a great impact on me. It was years ago. I remember Oprah had all of the rappers on our show. She had uh, Common. She had a couple of executives. I think maybe Russell Sims and a couple guys on it. And she was grilling them. Like, why are y'all making this kind of music? But at the same time, Kathy Hughes is the one who's pushing the music. Yeah. So I'm like, where's the disconnect? Yeah. You cannot blame the artist for everything. The artists do share in responsibility. Absolutely. But what about the people who are pushing the music on the airwaves? Yeah. I think they share some responsibility Absolutely. too. Absolutely. It's, it is definitely but, a two-sided coin. But we can talk about this all day. So, so, but that's a great point, though, to segue to, you know, what's the point? What's the perspective on hip hop and its state? Is it in a state of decline? Is it a growing industry? Ooh. Streams, views, all of those will be factors that you would think that it's growing, but. I don't know, man. I might have a difference of opinion. I recently saw, listen to this. Okay. So Michael K. Williams, rest in peace, man. Rest in um, peace. You know, if you don't know who he is, genius. Look, look up the name. Genius. But he, had, he, had a, he had a series on Vice called Black Market where he talked about digital trappers mm -hmm. and stream farmers. And essentially what they would do is they would set up shop in warehouses and abandoned buildings or whatever yep. and they'd essentially create bots to generate streams for artists and i'm not talking about just no name nobody's becoming somebody's mainstream right. artists too right so when we do this comparison about what well, did hip hop hip-hop decline and the the counter argument is no look at the numbers well we are and y'all fudging them numbers are getting the numbers fudged. are getting fudged for sure you know what i'm saying so on so look, look putting that in there as a more or less as a caveat to like when we start discussing whether or not if hip hop's at a decline and you want to throw numbers in there, you also have to factor in that asterisk 100%, next to the numbers. 100%. Because numbers have always been fudged in music, right? I, back in the day when we were doing music, got my man Big Mocha in the back, my, my partner in crime with the music. Back in the day when we were doing music, labels used to buy a couple hundred thousand copies of their artist's record. Yep. So they were fudging, they were fudging numbers back then. Yeah. But it's just back then you knew exactly what the fudging was. Mm -hmm. Now, you're right. Like with the farms and everything, like like you oh, don't man. know. Like, man, listen, I I I I heard uh, another dope ass podcaster telling a story about he went on YouTube and was looking up an artist and he was thinking about signing an artist. So he looked at their views. That's and, what they do. And and he looked down their YouTube page and they had two thousand of the same comment. Yep. It looked like they had 6,000 comments, but it was 2,000 of the same comment. Ridiculous. So stuff like that, man, you, you don't know what you're getting out here. And as far as the, 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 the thing with artists, are, are artists doing better now? Is it declining? I think that it's hard to really tell because preparing for this, I did some research. And hip-hop market share-wise is still... Where, it, where it's been over the last few years. Right. It's still one of the most popular forms of music. Mm -hmm. It's the most popular in the U.S., 
yep. is second or third in the world behind, I think, only pop, right? Yep. So it's still market share wise where it's been. Yeah. But the thing is, how important were the, because this is the way I think about this argument. The artists like who, who came up in, in, in hip hop's heyday, right? Mm -hmm. In the golden era or whatever. You got Nas, you got Biggie, Pac. Before that, you had P.E. Obviously, before that, Run DMC is what made hip hop international for the most part. I'm not, not taking nothing away from any other the pioneers. Right. But Run DMC came and they took it to a whole nother level. Now, how much of what we're seeing right now in terms of hip hop market share is like a residual effect of what those artists did all through the 80s and 90s yeah as opposed you, to be hard pressed how good these artists are right you'd be hard pressed to look at it any other way the pioneers paved the way for these artists to even have an opportunity you speak of market share i think of profit share that's the first thing that comes to mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. while the market share may still be what it is today the profit share is only widened for artists yeah. so it gives them reason 100%. to what reproduce and duplicate what they see as a success they're only doing what they think sells yeah. and that's what creativity gets compromised right and that's yeah. that's my problem i feel that creativity has been compromised over the recent years because no one wants to tinker with what's already successful is this about to go back to lupe all right my bad my bad i didn't mean to go there i mean to go there i mean to go back to lupe. i mean it i didn't mean it. all right continue my bad Good. Has that, see, why the curve? If you, if you know us, you know where that, where that comes from. <laughs> but no, no, no. My, my point is, I think, you know, it's one of those, if it don't broke, if it ain't broke, it ain't don't, broke, try, broke to don't it, try to fix right? it. Right? But what's broken is creative genius. It is. What's, what's, what's it is. left on the outside looking in is the talented kid whose passion is just being great at what they create. Whoa. You get know what I'm saying? So it's like, no kid, I get that you're great at that but you're unwilling to compromise your integrity and do it this way. Like you could be amazing here, especially with your skill set, if you only fall in line. So right, the kid with integrity, right. the kid with character that says no, they're on the outside looking in. But the, but the artist is like, okay, I'll compromise all of my talent because I see fame as a reality for me right now. To yeah. me, that's what's most disappointing about him. That's the decline. The decline isn't profit share. I mean, or the decline isn't market share. The decline isn't streams versus CDs sold or, or LimeWire or any of that stuff. The decline in, is in the pursuit of true art. No doubt about that it. That bothers it's me more than anything. The decline is in the quality of the music, which eventually will lead to the decline in market share and the, the, the decline in popularity we got and the decline in sales. Listen. Drake just did an Afro Beats album. Beyonce mm -hmm. just did something relatively similar. With, no doubt. With, with, with that vibe. No doubt. Uh, there's a reason why Afro Beats they is, coming is, up. is doing what it's doing right now. And, and, and I love is, Afro Beats. And look, we love hip hop. Y'all obviously know we love hip hop. But what I want to hear from hip hoppers and, and, and for the new artists that are out right now, I challenge you to be more creative, to go out on a limb and do something that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's what made the music as popular as it is right now. And if we're going to have as much success going forward, y'all got to take it. Y'all got to take the torch from the guys who came before you, the guys and women who came before you. And you got to take that torch of creativity and take it into the future. Absolutely. That's all I got to say on it. Listen, one last thing. Mm -hmm. 50 years in the game, speaking of hip hop. 50 years. This is the 50th year. Happy birthday. We celebrate the hip hop. There's a lot to be done this year. The Grammys, you know, I hate doing current events when it comes to stuff like this because for whatever reason, I think it ages the, the, the work. But this is a milestone for us as a community and as a culture. 50 years. If you watch the Grammys, fingerprints all over. Everywhere, 100%. Everywhere. So, so stay tuned to a lot of the stuff that we got going on and what we plan to do to celebrate hip hop's 50th year in this game. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode, man. Appreciate y'all joining us. Beast bars and bourbon.